What's up, YouTube? Today, I'm a happy man. Ah, uh, it's, it's finally here. The Sims 4 Realm of Magic developer livestream was today, and I'm bringing a sample of the good stuff. We're going to trim a chunk of chit chat off and give you a neat summary of everything they showed today. Summarizing these is one of my favorite things to do. I've got some of those fine details to help you make a decision or get hyped about the pack if you already know you want it. They showed off tons of features, which frees me up to write about it this weekend, so let's get to it. We were hosted by Sim Gurus Romeo and Ninja, and we started in Cass. However, like I said last night, this isn't a Sims fashion channel, so we'll use the magic of editing to cover that last. There are two new aspirations in Realm of Magic, but I don't yet know the rewards. There is Spellcraft and Sorcery, which guides you through the spellcasting gameplay, and the Purveyor of Potions aspirations, which is more focused on the potions side. There aren't any new traits in this pack, except for the trait that is passed by spellcasters to their offspring. We know that that's called Magical Bloodline. So, after a time, we finally got into the game, like about a half hour in. And we saw the world of Glimmerbrook, which has a total of five lots. It's a sleepy little middle of nowhere place with a lovely little brook running through it. I would hope that at times it glimmers. It contains four 30 by 20 and one 40 by 30 lot. There is a magical family living in this two story home. So if you'd like to start as a caster, you can do this. But of course, you're able to make a sim a spell caster through create a sim. But it's easy to get the ability without cheating, so do keep that in mind. There's a nice empty lot near the completely unhidden magical portal that you can walk straight through to get to the magic realm. This is a positive and a negative. You can jump right in, but there's no reward chasing to that aspect. No mystery. Now we switched gears and they plan to show how you become a spellcaster and they led their sim through the magic portal. They noted that actual spellcasters will have no difficulty getting there. We already know you can use glimmer stones to teleport to the magic realm when you've unlocked spellcasting. Spellcasting is locked to teen and up, but children can have the magical bloodline and they are also able to use familiars. Magical bloodline gives benefits to casting spells that a normal caster wouldn't have depending on the rank of the parent. Multiple generations of magical bloodline gives a stronger effect. Now that is a nice touch. We don't know the details yet. They just told us that. The magic realm is really like some kind of alternate dimension where gravity evidently doesn't matter with a really nice skybox and its own day and night cycle. Weather isn't present here, but to be honest with you, I don't care. It's like space, so it just wouldn't make much sense anyway. They first showed the garden or collecting area and explained that there are three sages. And the backstory of this world is that this magical vortex is breaking everything apart and the three sages are working to keep it, uh, its remains held together. We're playing pretend here. It doesn't seem to play a big role, but that is what they had in mind when they designed the world. The portals are set up to allow transport between the four areas. You walk through and bam, teleport. Sims will route using the portals, so it's not necessary to click them. There's a magical headquarters of sorts in the center with three areas off to the side. This area is a marketplace for casters called Caster's Alley, where you can buy potion ingredients, brooms, wands, familiars, and spells. There's the garden and collecting area we saw first, and a dueling area as well. So getting around this place is super simple, and Sims can path using the portals. I've got to give Romeo props for good uses of tab camera to show stuff off. This was a solid stream despite its several technical difficulties. They pointed out this world is one big lot as we already knew. I've mentioned previously that we know you can build here with cheats. Inside the magical headquarters we see one of the sages. Each of them has a symbol over the head that corresponds to the school of magic they're an expert in. Evidently, there will always be a sage, so if you marry one or something, a new one will take their place. They asked the sage how to use magic, and the sage casted a spell that gave the sim special sight, allowing them to see magical moats. They were given a quest to pick up seven moats from around the area. In order to prove yourself to the sage, you have to go after these and turn them in. It's a fetch quest, for the most part, only a super simple fetch quest. 
I mean, you have limited time to get these, but seriously, you swing around and pick up seven and you're done. They brought up that you can actually get a moat hound perk and have permanent moat sight, which lets you gather these for little boosts. Their sim turned over the moats and was immediately turned into a spellcaster. Someone asked in stream if you can overmax, as in learn literally every spell and perk, and the answer is yes. With enough dedication, that is possible. They now showed the new spellbook, which has a tab for each school of magic. The UI for this is really slick, and it shows your progress in each of the categories. As you can see, there are 9 practical magic spells, 7 mischief spells, and 8 untamed for a total of 24. There are 15 different potions under the alchemy category. Reperio was mentioned, Morphiate which lets you change sims into objects, Untamed Magic is all about harnessing magic's power with some really powerful spells. They can resurrect sims super easily with Dedeathify or summon ghosts directly via their tombstones. You can use Necrocall to summon a ghost and bring them back with Dedeathify. Duplicato allows you to make a duplicate of yourself to do your bidding, which sounds really fun, but they didn't show it. We were told a lot more than we were shown. In all, there's nearly 40 things to learn, plus the Spellcaster perk system. They put in tons of things here. This is damn near exactly what I hoped for in a spellcasting system. They then showed some of the potions. Potion of Perk Purging lets you respect your perk points. Potion of Forceful Friendship makes you really charismatic so other sims will like you. There's a new motive panel for spellcasters, but there's something new. A spellcasting charge meter along with the perk panel. This charge is not about simply filling it up or it being empty. As the meter rises, effects differ. You're kind of using wild magical energy, and as it gets fuller, it means spells may fail, but will be more powerful. As you continue filling the meter, risks begin to mount. When it gets full, you're overcharged and can potentially die if you cast another spell. So death by overload was now confirmed, so you want to balance out how much magic you're using. So unlike other meters, this one needs to deplete to stay safe, but it should do so naturally over time. Because familiars help to prevent death, you may want to have one out if you plan to spam spells. We don't know how this works yet, so be careful. <laughs> now they brought up the perks panel. The talent points you gain on rank up as a spellcaster can be spent here, and they give you little boosts that help you to customize your sims. There are three individual tracks, meaning that you need one to get to the next. Each of the three categories is related, such as the middle is all alchemy branch. They showed us a high level casters perks panel now. You can get protection from curses, manage your charge meter, become a master duelist, or di get discounts at the magic stores. The perks on the right are free to be purchased as long as your rank is high enough. They don't have prerequisites like the others. The discharge perk may be desirable if you want to cast a lot as it will let you get rid of that build up magical charge to make casting safe again. Sims can practice spell casting, purchase spell tomes, or search bookshelves in the Magical HQ to learn new spells. You can also get spellcaster training from the Sages. There are actually three special spells only available from the three Sages. The highest rank spells have to be learned from the Sages, is what that means. So start kissing ass. Next up, they showed us the caster shop where they were able to pick a familiar, like a butterfly, raven, or skull. Tomes are also available that will teach specific spells or alchemy recipes. Spells require a specific rank to be learned. You can get a tome but not be able to use it until your spellcaster's rank is high enough. Ninja confirmed that shops cycle their wares once a day, so you won't always see the same inventory. Certain ingredients may be available at times, which can be super helpful if your sim is crafting potions. Crystals have a new role. They're one of the main ingredients in potions. The spells require you to use the charge meter, while alchemy is going to let you craft as many times as you want as long as you have the ingredients. Certain potions require really weird ingredients like uh, needing a zombie Carl figurine for a de-deathify. There was a potion of perk purging for sale at the shop, so it's going to be easy to reset your caster if you don't like your perks. 
I know I personally will be taking some perks that give faster XP gain, then reset later if I want. There's a cool potion related perk, Potent Potables. This lets you hex potions so they will always do the failed result. I suppose potions might do the opposite of what you're going for if they fail, and with this hex you could always get the negative and give it to another sim. Maybe deplete a sim's needs with the new need filling potion. Next up, they summoned a familiar. Familiars have to be bound first, but once bound, you can summon one at a time. As mentioned before, there isn't a limit to how many you can own. Uh, they showed every familiar's icon in the high-level caster's familiar list, and there's quite a variety. It would actually seem that players with cats and dogs have it a little better as their familiars can be sent to get potion ingredients. There are 11 different familiars and familiars can be named, and you're allowed to have duplicates. All in all, familiars are cute little guys that protect you from death. They will resurrect you if you die, but not be able to do that two times in a row. They need to regenerate first. Stop dying so much. There doesn't seem to be a drawback to having a familiar, aside from it watching you do things you'd only do in private. <laughs> Wands and brooms. Something nice about this is... All the wands and brooms stack in your inventory, so you can have a little collection without stuffing up your sim's inventory. Inventory. You can set to always use a broom when appropriate and set a favorite broom or wand. If I remember right, on announcement day, they said this is a matter of preference. It seems like wands don't matter, but rather impact the animation when your sim casts a spell. I would have preferred that certain wands have magical boosts like increased success rate or reduced charge gain, but it is what it is. Their sim then went on a ride on a broom. Spellcasting level impacts how good your sim will be at broom riding. So we're pretty far in and they're just now getting into leveling up a spellcaster. They went for the cauldron to brew a potion of plentiful needs. Evidently, four sims can brew at a cauldron at the same time. Not different recipes, but they can help one another to make potions, which is awesome. Animations at the cauldron are influenced by casting level, and this was shown to be quite stark, with the low-level caster getting physical while the high-level effortlessly uses his magic to stir it. Their sim ranked up, and they took Blender Arm, which speeds up potion crafting times. But things took a turn. Their sim got cursed. Curses are a thing that happens when you fail at magic, potion crafting, or even just drinking a potion. All in all, failure to use magic in some form. It's a bit like fame quirks, but these are not permanent. They don't go away on their own, but you can have them removed. Their sims brewed some nasty sludge and passed out from the fumes, which was actually pretty funny. They got a curse from this, the curse of unwarranted hostility, which is hilarious, but extremely annoying for the player. It makes Sims want to fight you out of nowhere. If you don't cure a curse, it'll stay on your Sim forever. But since you can have up to three, this is going to be a priority. Their high-level caster gave the newbie a potion of curse cleansing. Evidently, they say the gameplay gets pretty hard with three curses. Potion of Nausea was in there. Potion of Curse Cleansing. So many potions. Next, they made mac and cheese in the cauldron. That's nasty. They're recommending the cauldron for off-the-grid living, though you can only make a few recipes with it. Three specifically, like chili and mac. <laughs> but it makes a ton of food. Twelve servings when you cook it. That's pretty crazy. But their Sim 8 and 11 servings of poor quality mac and cheese was left over. So curses are self-inflicted only. So you can't curse other Sims, though there do seem to be some spells that impact other Sims negatively. Now they did a duel. You can challenge to a duel at the dueling grounds or find a spot nearby. It's possible to duel for ingredients, knowledge, artifacts, which is wands and brooms. Winning a duel for items or spells doesn't seem to have a downside as they said you can't lose things. You're not giving them your broom or, or spells and in, in the case of spells you wouldn't care if you did. So it seems like a good way to round out your spell book to try to win duels for random spells. They showed the new pie menu for magic which houses all of the magic interaction. Since their caster only knows one spell it's rather small for now. 
The simp failed at the spell, it backfired on her, and she deliriated herself. If you learn a spell from someone else, it may be higher rank than your caster, which is going to cause more of these failures. Now remember they said that tomes need to be your level to learn them, so you need to pay attention to a spell's difficulty. I'm not sure how we can tell that yet. They showed the menu that allows you to remove your spellcaster status, but who the hell would ever use that? Anyway, they tried to learn a spell from one of the sages, but lacked the relationship. Just need a few socials to fix that up. With enough friendship, they ask again to learn a spell. They learned Desperio and cast it on her immediately, which is, I think, what any of us would do. This makes the target sad. There's no need to get to know a sim to cast spells on them. You can just target them straight away. At this point, thank God, they switched to the high-level caster and tried some of his spells. They used Morphiate on that sim Morgan from the trailer and turned him into a fish. Sims don't like it when you morphiate others in a public space and you'll get some negative reactions from this. They now tried Inferniate, one of the elemental spells in the Untamed category. They can set Sims on fire. They confirmed you can't murder other Sims, but you could in theory cause death using fire spells if objects nearby combusted. Evidently, they will put themselves out or you can put them out with Chilio, but in this case the Sim put herself out and then got frozen. They confirm that ghosts can still cast spells, and simps who die of overcharge get a bonus in that they cannot again die of overcharge. So they can cast unlimited spells without concern for the meter. That's pretty cool. There's a burgliate spell that lets you steal at range. So you can be the ultimate klepto, but naturally this probably has a drawback. If you steal things, there's no longer there. Well, that's how it is when it comes to kleptomaniacs, so you're gradually emptying out public spaces. After messing around with spells for a time, they finally went to showing us build by. Starting with some new runes that they added, which gives you a taste of the items included in Realm of Magic. We then systematically went through a tons of items. They almost went over the time limit they'd set because build by is that extensive. The cauldrons can be themed based on magic schools and there are tons of items that look like they belong in Hogwarts with that slightly medieval vibe to them. Lots of gold trim and items that'd fit right into a wealthy wizard's home. I'm beginning to feel like game packs, especially on sale, are the best value in Sims 4. Even though I don't always like them, this is a lot more stuff for $20 than 4 or 5 My First Pet stuffs and you're getting all that extra gameplay. Eventually, they got to the buy debug item, showing all the potions and familiars accessible to us. This is great for people who just want to play around and don't mind cheating. You can bring the magic shop right to your house if you want to. This stuff includes the scenery used in the magic realm. I guess we should expect this now that the extended build by catalog has been unlocked to builders, but it's still good they think of these little things. They confirm that you can use the portals on your home lot so long as you use the same type of portal. Uh, for instance, portal entrance 1 and portal exit 1 link together. Sims will actually route through the portals and come out on the other side. That's going to lead to some seriously cool builds for wizard families. They showed us this fireplace toward the end. You can light it as a wizard using the Inferniate spell which is such a cool touch. Next up was the new death, caused by overcharging the spellcaster's charge meter. When it's full, you risk death and each spell you cast will kind of bump up the meter. You're being exposed to magical energy and continuing to cast while overcharged is extremely dangerous. But remember what was said about ghosts who died to overcharge. <laughs> well people, I have to say, you should know by now I'm not always in love with individual packs and I judge every one of them based on its own merits. This one is chock full of stuff, but you need to want or like that stuff. If you want a good spell casting system, this looks pretty good and based on what we see here expect my review to be positive so far. The only thing that I don't like is how easy everything is but if you've come to accept or even like that aspect of Sims 4 you're probably going to like Realm of Magic. If being an OP spellcaster is what you want they gave you that ability and I certainly will enjoy using the magic system. No you can't be a wizard vampire but it looks like casters are so powerful it barely matters. In fact, those sunlight issues and weaknesses would kind of drag a wizard down. But I still 
vote in favor of giving the player what they would like to do. I'm not going to go over cast extensively, but we can fly through some of the things they showed. They wanted some casters to be able to look sort of gothic, but didn't want to put too much of that in with vampires because it already provides that style of look to players. So there's plenty of nice contemporary dresses and the like for the modern but less brooding spellcaster. I'm glad that Romeo and Ninja admitted that they themselves don't really know how to turn things or discuss fashion and aren't cast people. In that way, we're definitely on the same page. I do like the look of some of this, but reviewing it would not be my thing. <laughs> so this was kind of all over the place, tons of info, but that's the nature of streams. I tried to keep topics as separate as possible. But hey, if you liked my work here, let me know in the comments and share this with others if it's helpful to you. I will start guide coverage on Monday and expect to get all the spells and their effects listed out early in the week. I'll hopefully track down some hidden bonuses in the game's files. Well, thanks for watching and have a fantastic weekend. Now to edit this beast.